Welcome to the Hamptons in sunny Long Island, New York State. Now this is uh, very different from where we usually do scuba diving in the Caribbean, Florida, warm water areas. No, this is a very cold water, well not, not cold water, but cool water environment. Uh, low, lower visibility. There's no very few corals here. There are corals here, but there are very few. Uh, it's usually, I think, I think it's just one species that forms the shallow water corals here, this northern star coral. So why would I be in this sort of environment in New England, essentially, as opposed to the places that I usually scuba dive, like Florida and the Caribbean? Well, uh, it's a little bit of a surprise, and you're going to see in a few minutes. There's the Ponquag Bridge. Well, the new Ponquag Bridge, it's actually two bridges. There's the new Ponquag Bridge and the old Ponquag Bridge. Uh, the old one is what we're gonna be diving today. And it's actually been converted into a fishing pier, but you can also scuba dive it. And that's where we're gonna be going today. You can't see it from here, but I'll show you a better view of it once we get close up. Look at all the swallows. Was so excited here. <laughs> Little did I know uh, what was going to happen. But here we're going in. You can already tell visibility is not great. Not not great visibility here. That's okay though. This was this was actually better than I thought it would be. So I was actually kind of optimistic here as we went in. See, I'm already starting to check sort of the nooks and crannies here to see if I can find anything. Uh, but this was definitely better than I thought it would be, at least at first. So we started sort of going along this shallow area here, along the side of the old bridge, heading towards the sort of main part of it, which is where it actually gets deeper. And here you can start to see the problem. Uh, as we got closer to the uh, main part of the bridge, uh, the visibility decreased really dramatically and the current was really starting to pick up. So we'd actually managed to miss the slack tide here. Uh, for those who've seen my Phil Foster video, it's, it's the same here as it is there. You wanna be in there for slack tide where there's the least amount of current. So this was, I think, just after slack tide. So you can see the current's really starting to pick up here. Still a lot of sea life, uh, lots of crabs there. You can see a few black sea bass, uh, some cunners and tau togs, uh, lots of algae. Lots of chromists, uh, so lots of sea life for sure. We we kept pressing on. We thought that maybe even even in this visibility, if we could get out of the current, we might be okay. But no, it was just kind of a horror show to be honest. Uh, the current was terrible, so we just uh, we decided to turn around. Uh, we probably could have handled one or the other, but both was just was just too much, especially in an unfamiliar dive site. But we didn't give up. We, 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 we turned back and we decided to uh, investigate the shallower area where there was no current a little bit more. Uh, look a little bit more under the nooks and crannies there. See what we can find. So we're turning back here and heading into shallower and clearer water. And we were rewarded actually because one of the first things I saw was this nice juvenile blue angelfish which is a tropical stray species, and that is exactly what we were looking for here. At this specific time of year, uh, just after, shortly after Labor Day, September, at this specific time of year, you can actually find a lot of the tropical species uh, that are in Florida and the Caribbean brought up north to the northerly east coast of the United States on the Gulf Stream and they get transported all the way up here and they sort of linger around uh, around these northern areas until they just sort of die basically it's kind of sad but right now at this time of year the water's still warm enough for them to survive and we can go in and actually dive this area where we're going and we should be able to see some of these tropical species interacting with the local uh, more temperate water species uh, so we started looking a little bit harder here. We, we were sort of encouraged by that, and we thought, oh, well, maybe we can get lucky. Maybe we can find a few more uh, tropical strays just right around here. Uh, we saw a few flounders. Uh, that's a, Those are local species. I think those are there's winter flounder and summer flounder. I'm not sure which one that one is. 
was, but those are local species, but I always like seeing them. Very nice. And here we are, really starting to investigate the uh, crags and stuff in between the rocks on the jetty here. Looking for anything we can. And here I found uh, basically the, the number one thing that I was looking for, which is a juvenile snowy grouper. And you can just see it here. I get a better shot in a second. And there it is. Juvenile snowy grouper. That was the main thing I was looking for on this trip. And actually, interestingly, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of this at the time, but if you look to the right there, uh, there's also actually a doctor fish uh, there to the right, which is a surgeon fish species. And that's another tropical stray. I, di I didn't even realize it was there when I was getting the shot. Uh, but snowy grouper, I was really happy to see because this is a deep water species of grouper, actually, which in the Caribbean and Florida, they occur well below safe diving limits. So snorkeling and seeing juvenile tropical strays up in the Maritimes, up in Long Island and places like this, is really one of the only ways to actually come across them. So that was a real treat. I was really, really hoping that we find one of those. And if you look carefully here, you can actually see a, uh, a young scamp grouper hiding in the rocks here. Another one we weren't even aware of when we were getting the shot. Here's this nice uh, northern sea robin. That's a local species, but pretty cute. It was, a, it was kind of a small one. It was definitely an environment I'd never really explored very much. All right, we're gonna try doing some uh, sanding and dip netting here at uh, Fire Island in uh, Oak Beach. Uh, we had some success here yesterday, more success than we had anywhere else. So we're gonna try again here, uh, see what happens. In that corner over there, we're gonna try. Uh, and we'll hopefully uh, duplicate yesterday's success. Here's the sand net. Um, this is what we're gonna be using. One person takes one side, uh, another person takes the other side, and we sort of both move towards shore with it, dragging the net along. Uh, we have to angle it a bit, though, so at uh, the bottom, man, just to actually trap the fish in the net. Uh, now, it's a two-person job. You can't do it with one person. So here, uh, you take that end. Here, I'll keep unfurling this one. I'm trying to get it to its full length. Ready? Yep, go. So here's another successful run. Here's we've got a pipe fish here. Anything hiding under here? Oh yeah, oh there's a spot fin butterfly fish. That's a tropical tray. That's a spot fin butterfly fish. It's a really nice fish, beautiful. That's what you're looking yeah, for. That's what we're looking for. You know, There's a, um, a uh, tautog, is what that is. It's a northern species of wrasse. That's not a tropical stray. That's actually just a northern. Two more tautogs there, northern species of wrasse. A lot more of these uh, Atlantic silver sides. That's mainly what we're getting. There's another tautog there. Anything more? Oh, it's a jellyfish. That is, actually, it's a tinafore. Comb jelly. Show that. Yeah. Oh, well, it's just amorphous, pretty much. There it is. You know what's staying. Here. Here's a cunner there. That's the other uh, northern wrasse species. Can other than the get tau -tau. That silver side out of the way. There it is. Green with the silver sides here. I'll move these ones. There it is. Okay, next. Next. Here's a that's a feather blenny there. That's what that is. Looks a bit like the uh, Tautog, but it's a really different head. Yeah, that's a good load. Yeah. Good crab. Lots of these guys. What's that next to the crab? Oh, that's a silver perch. Nice. Right. Pick it up. Nice. Oh, cornet fish. Let's see, we've got two blue spotted cornet fishes in there and one uh, 
pipe fish. Yeah. Which one's the? The top two are the cornet fish and the pipe fish. Here, I'll show you. I'll take them out individually. Here's the spot, the uh, blue spot, uh, uh, the blue spotted cornet fish, Atlantic blue spotted cornet fish. See that? It's got a long whip-like tail. And that's a tropical stray. Yeah. Now look at this one. This is a pipe fish. See, this is a northern pipe fish. This is not a tropical stray. And the way you tell the difference, I mean, there's several uh, differences. The face looks a little different. The snout's shorter. But the main easy difference is the tail. You see, this one doesn't have the thin um, whip-like tail. It has a sort of little, little fin back there. It has a little actual what's, caudal fin. What's this called? Uh, this is a northern pipe fish. This is not a tropical stray. This is actually a local species. So I'll let that one go. So that's how you tell the difference between a pipe fish and a cornet fish here. Nope. All right, we'll just release this other cornet fish here. It's a long whip tail on that one. That one in the water, and they sort of they sort of go close to the surface. You'll see here. Yeah. See, sort of I'm very slow meandering. There it goes. Yeah. Nice. I managed to get here seahorses. Look, 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 seahorses. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, there's a flounder there, too. Seahorses are actually related to uh, the pipefish. What's this thing? That's a tautog. See the seahorse? See the similarity in the mouth? They're related. Pregnant seahorse. That's a male. Male. that thing. Like I think it. it's called a grubby. It's like a skeleton. We got some kind of clingfish here. See on the underside there? It's got sort of a suction cup there. And then that's what it looks like on that side. It's like a clingfish. Cool. All right. Okay. What you got here? Well, we have two uh, butterfly fish here. We've got two species, the four-eyed butterfly fish at the top here and the spot fin butterfly fish at the bottom here. That's the short big eye. That's one of the ones we were really looking for. Look at that. That's a deep water fish in uh, the Caribbean. And that's, that's it here. That's a juvenile. That's one of the sort of specialties I was really hoping to get. Oh, that's really nice. What's it called? It's called a short big eye. Gorgeous. See, that one actually has the four eyes. It's got two spots there and two spots on the other side. It's a nice haul for spot fins on that one. Yeah. We have a gray snapper here. Yeah, that's uh, another tropical stray, otherwise known as a mangrove snapper. Cool. And this here is a local species. It's called a, it's a bluefish. Lots of people like eating these when they get big. Nice big when they get big. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, there's another snapper actually. Two mangroves there. Nice. Both the same? Yeah. Cool. Got a little flounder in here. These are local, but they're always very cute. I love these guys. See, that's a little like, I'm not sure if that's winter or summer flounder. He's got a yeah. I don't know, it's maybe summer. I'll turn them over to the other side. Yeah, see. Very cool. We got now American eel. Nice. Let's see if I can get it in the sun. Get it away. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we got a grouper. Nice. We got a grouper here. This is great. That's one of the things I wanted to get. Really wanted to get. I think that's a, um, I think it's a scamp grouper. That's really nice. Look at that. Let's get another couple of shots here. That's a tropical stray. Let's get him right in the front of it. Hold on this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scamp grouper? I think so. Band tail puffer there. And we got I, what I think is a uh, great barracuda. I don't think that's a senate. I think that's a great barracuda. 
Those are both tropical strays. That's the puffer. That's the puffer. And the barracuda's on the other side here. I'll pull this in. Behind the puffer. There we go. Tau tog, and this is a feather blenny. Similar colors and pattern, but different uh, head shape. Different species. Different species. Tell me what you got here. Okay, we got two groupers here. One I'm pretty sure is a red grouper. Not sure though. The other one is, I think, a scamp. I hope you enjoyed the video here. It was sort of a was sort of a two-part video with our scuba attempt and uh, the more successful seining and dip netting a little later. Let me know if you enjoyed this format with the seine netting and the dip netting. I know I enjoyed it. I'd never really done it before, and I'd be happy to try it again in different places. So if you enjoyed seeing that, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try and make a few more videos like that. So that's about it for this video. A little bit of a different format, but I hope you enjoyed it. Lots more coming soon. Make sure you subscribe so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. As always, it was great to see you.